Wait, so first of all, welcome to Flash Math, those at home who aren't here today and are able to join in to our awesome video. We're going to keep going with probability and talk about two different types of probability that make us sound really, really, really smart. So, we're going to get into theoretical and experimental probability today. Turns out we actually already did it, but now we're just going to put labels on it. So, here we go. All right, getting better at it. Okay, so let's look at this die. So, the first thing I want to talk about is our formula for probability. If you remember, our formula for probability is the total possible outcomes and on top of your total possible outcomes would be your total desired outcomes. I apologize for my handwriting, I just get so excited about probability. Now, let's look at this die. Total desired outcomes over total possible outcomes, the probability of getting a six, or rolling a six. Well, we know that there are six possible options we can have, because there are six sides to this die. And only one of them is a six. Hopefully you only find one six on this, on this die, unless it's like trick die, which you shouldn't use, that's cheating, it's bad. So our probability is one over six. What about the probability of getting an even number? Show me with your fingers how many even numbers there are on a die. Show me the fingers. That's right, three, good job. Two, four, and six. So, six total possible outcomes. Three of them even. We can simplify this down. Our probability of getting an even number is one over two. This whole thing right here is called the theoretical probability. Let's write this down. So theoretical probability uses math to determine what our probability should be. Meaning, if I were to roll this die six times, three of those six times, I should end up with an even number in theory. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. Is that what actually happens? No. It could be. Could be. But do we know for sure? No. No, we don't. Just... So let's look at an example. I'll give you an example. We'll put example one up on the board. Write this example for me. First, pretend this is even. Okay. I'm going to erase it because it looks pretty bad. That's a little better. This is a spinner. Remember, the arrow spins. I just drew it there so you can visualize it. What's the theoretical probability of landing on a four? There is a one in four chance of landing on a four. That brings us to our next part. Theoretical is what it should be, not what it's going to be. Which means our next type of probability is when we actually test it out. And we call that guy experimental probability. Experimental probability is exactly as it sounds, the experiment. You actually have to run an experiment to get the experimental probability. So it uses data from an experiment or numbers, actual numbers, to determine the actual probability. So 
Will your probability, theoretical probability, and experimental probability match? No. No. But they might. And let's look at an example. So experimental probability means you actually have the data. They actually ran an experiment. They're going to give it to you. They're going to say, we spun this spinner six times. And we spun it six times. Four of those were a one. So in that set of data, the probability of getting a one is four out of six, or two thirds. It doesn't match the theoretical probability, but based on that data, that is what the probability is. We only take it from the data set they give you. So let's make a data set of our own. Let's go back to this problem. The probability of me rolling uh, an even number is one over two, three out of six. So if I roll this die six times, or if I roll it 10 times, or if I roll it 50 times, I should get an even number that matches the ratio one to two. Let's find out and roll it 10 times. Three. Five. One. Five. Six. 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 One more. Yahtzee! Two. Kidding, that's not actually. Yeah, well, never mind. <laughs> that is a Yahtzee. Now, this is the data that I got. I rolled it 10 times. So, my experimental probability, my experimental probability of getting an even number, according to my data, I rolled it 10 times. The actual data, how many evens did I get? Well, I got one, two, three, four, five, six even numbers, which simplifies down to three over five. According to the experiment that I ran, while it is close, according to just my data, the odds of me getting an even number after we ran the experiment were three to five. Without running the experiment, it is going to be one to two. So, I like to look at it this way. Theory, and this is, I'm gonna give you a little handy handout to, to write down a little organizer so you can see what it looks like. Theoretical probability. No experiment. That means you're not rolling the dice, you're not flipping a coin, you're just taking it before you roll it, and you say, okay, what's the odds of me rolling a two? Before I roll it, before I do any kind of testing, the odds of me getting to two, in theory, are one out of six on a die. Experimental probability, You run an experiment first. You have to have results. Let's run it. Let's see how I did. I'm going to roll it 10 times. One, two, three. Oh, I was trying to get a two, right? How many times did I get a two? One, two. Oh, I got one. Three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. The odds of me actually getting a ten after I roll it ten times, or two after I roll it ten times, are one out of ten. This is the probability of getting it two. Any questions about theoretical probability? 
I'm not gonna run an experiment, but in theory, I'm gonna guess this is gonna be your quiz, so let's do some practice.